My name is Alex Hardy. I'm uh, an estimator and sales manager with Kite Spy. Thank you, Phil, for having me, and thank you, thank you all for uh, giving us the opportunity here to talk about this a little bit. I just want to tell you who Pipe Spy is quickly, and then we'll get into the PSL information. We're a uh, general engineering and sewer contractor, and, and full service plumber as well. We've been in business for 15, 16 years. We've been doing trenchless sewer replacements, which is our specialty, since the equipment was invented and adapted for sewer lateral, uh, for private sewer lateral uh, replacements. And uh, so we've been doing that. We've probably done 2,000 trenchless sewer replacements over the years. I'm estimating that, but I think it's probably right around that number. We are the experts in trenchless sewer replacements. We've done more than anybody. We're, uh, we, we ran into a lot of the questions that you all are running into when this uh, ordinance first came uh, in for Oakland and uh, Emeryville and Piedmont and Richmond Annex. Uh, actually, Steve's Sanitary District was turned over to East Bay Mud as well. And uh, we were involved in consulting with East Bay Mud uh, on some of their initial planning on how they were going to do this. Sorry to say they didn't listen to us a whole lot. <laughs> but, uh, so it, it's become rather complicated, but it's, it's, uh, it's navigable uh, if you act early enough on it. If you're doing a short sale and it's closing in a week, you might have, uh, you might have a squeeze in getting the PSL dealt with. But if you're giving it a good month, then should be plenty of time to, uh, to handle any issues with getting the sewer either certified or replaced or repaired as necessary to get it certified. My first question would be, has anybody seen this brochure? You have it online. Okay, so you've all seen this. So I'm not going to just go through the brochure. I could do that, but you can all read this, I'm sure, uh, just as well as I could read it to you. Uh, our experience is that in most of, in the sanitary districts prior to East Bay Mud taking over uh, this uh, ordinance, it was a camera inspection. With the exception of Alameda, it was a camera inspection that proved that the sewer was in good shape. Is that foolproof? Not really. You put a camera in in an old cast iron sewer line, it may look good, but it might still be leaking. East Bay Mud has determined, after talking to uh, a lot of contractors, that the only way to really test to see if the sewer lateral is either holding air or water is not leaking, is to conduct either a uh, air pressure test or a water exfiltration test. What that involves is, uh, the water exfiltration test involves putting a riser, in other words, a piece of pipe, a five foot piece of pipe on a clean out at the house, putting water in it, and then you have to plug off the sewer at the main, upstream from that clean out if there is a portion that's upstream, and in any branch connections. So if your sewer's coming down from the house and you have three lines tying in, you have to plug all those off. And then you can either do the air test or you can put water in the riser and uh, then the inspector will just look to see that the water doesn't go down or that the air pressure doesn't go down on the pressure gauge. So that's, uh, that's their reasoning behind that is that's the only thing that truly shows uh, in the sewers. Got more pressure. Clay pipes, I've heard of one that passed. <laughs> it was brand new. It was 12 feet long. And actually the contractor who got it to pass, he said he, he might have plugged it a little bit, but he felt badly for the, uh, for the home. <laughs> but it was brand new. So. Uh, clay always falls. Cast iron doesn't always pass. A lot of times, cast iron, if it's particularly old, back to the 50s or so, the pipe will look like this when we're looking at it there. There ain't no pipe in the bottom. Often you'll see sort of a little, uh, a little trough in the bottom of the pipe. And what that implies is that there's been some standing water in the pipe. Maybe it's not sloped as well as it should be, or there's been a blockage cause the pipe to rust out of the bottom. So don't always assume when your client tells you that you have a cast iron pipe that it's going to pass. There's a good chance it may not. Now here's the, the complexity of doing these spin mud tests is we have to run our camera and then we get a sense, oh, I think this could pass. Then we set up for the test. Now in terms of uh, how much the test would cost, it's difficult to say because it depends on how many connections there are at the house. If it's just a, a typical, your typical, like, um, you know, two-bedroom house that has a sewer coming out the front, and it goes out to the main right out in front, so it's A to B, then uh, simple enough to do the test. There has to be a clean-out at the house. There has to also be a clean-out at the curb. Do we all know what a clean-out is? Anybody not know what a clean-out is? At this point in the sewer. So you have to have those two clean-outs, which are required per city code anyway. 
And uh, then we're able to push a balloon down. It's an inflatable balloon, a test balloon. We push it down to the main and inflate it. And then we take one up the back and push it up into the house uh, about a foot and inflate that. Then we can conduct the test and see if, uh, if the line is leaking. If uh, it's an involved property, if there are a lot of connections, for instance, if the lateral runs down the side of the house, sometimes they wrap around the back of the house, particularly in old big homes. I've seen as many as nine connections at a house in Alameda at an old big party. And it, the sewer lateral will wrap almost three quarters of the way around the house. In that case, to conduct a pressure test, and the pipe wasn't in good shape, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway, but in order to conduct a pressure test on that, we would have to excavate at every branch connection and plug the lines. So that's where you're hearing sometimes these inspections can cost, uh, you know, $1,700, $1,000. Yeah, I could even see it costing more if you had to install four cleanouts, uh, five cleanouts just to conduct the test. So uh, that's that's the uh, the difficulty in giving you a price when we get a lot of calls. Uh, how much will it cost to do this test? Don't know until we look at it. We can tell you that it will be $150 to do a camera inspection. But beyond that, it's, it's very difficult for us to say without looking at it, seeing what kind of surfaces we might have to excavate through, because that's the importance and cost on sewers is the surface and, uh, and the depths to which we have to go. <coughs> so that's, uh, bear with us when you call in. I know it's frustrating for a lot of people when you call in and you want to know what's this going to be and how much is it going to cost. We don't know until we do One thing that may come up with your clients, and this could be useful with your clients, is they say, I've lived here 30 years, I've never had a backup. What's this all? Why, why do I have to replace the sewer? Well, here, there's two things the sewer's supposed to do. We all know one of them. But the hmm. other is it's supposed to be water tight. And the reason is that rainwater infiltrates the sewer on rainy days and the rainy season, ends up in the bay when it maxes out the treatment plant's capacity. EPA comes and knocks, and uh, East Bay Mud or, the, the, or whoever is uh, looking at potential fines from the federal government. This all goes way back to the Love Canal in New York, if anybody remembers that, is old enough to remember that, has maybe read about it. It was why the EPA was originally founded, uh, it's my recollection, over this <laughs> anyway, uh, so this all all leads from that. Uh, Berkeley's had an ordinance in force since 06. Alameda since even before that because they have a very high groundwater level. So that they developed their own uh, uh, even before the EPA came into it. The important things that are coming up now, though, are these uh, East Bay Mud Cities, or the, the complex uh, ones are the East Bay Mud Cities, uh, Oakland, Piedmont, Emeryville, El Cerrito, Kensington, and uh, is that it? Oh, Richmond Annex. That's what's going to be involved in the East Bay Mud Test. So for us to replace the sewer, you have to figure that, first of all, if, if you need a new sewer, we have to get it on our schedule. Right. Then we have to do the work. Then we have to get the inspection. Then we have to uh, get the certificate. Now, I can say in East Bay Mud's uh, favor, they're really efficient in uh, getting you a certificate once you've replaced the line and passed the inspection, or passed the inspection if the line didn't need replacement. You can get a certificate usually that day or next morning when you print it on the line. It's very quick. It's very easy to deal with. They charge $150 for the certificate. Other things that may come up, uh, if you're uh, handling an association, a homeowner's association, they have till 2021 to comply with all this. There. Not if it's a condo and there's an association involved in it, then they can get it uh, put off until 2021. The way that you delay having to do this is put a $4,500 excuse me, $4,500 deposit down to East Bay Mud and file an application, and they'll give you six months. The idea is there hasn't it hasn't been six months yet, so we don't know if they're going to actually be finding people if they don't deal with it within six months. Berkeley doesn't find people. We don't know what's going to happen. I would expect that they're going to start looking at fines. They may take the whole 4500 away and then make the new homeowner uh, just deal with it as if they're starting from square one. <coughs> Questions at this point? I, I, in regards to the test, so initially you have the camera test. If that yeah. determines that the, the pipe is, let's say, old clay, 
and totally not going to pass and not going to go to need mm -hmm. the replacement, would you still then need to do the water pressure test? Okay. No. So you could clear that. And if you do do the water pressure test, is that something that is credited towards your account to do the work? Or is that a separate fee? Not necessarily. That would be a separate fee for the water test. The camera inspection definitely would be credited towards the work. But the, uh, the water pressure test or the air pressure test, is uh, that involves some labor that's fairly involved. Uh, it's also a three-hour window we have to wait for these things. But I think the yeah, next Berkeley or San Leandro require the pressure test? No, Berkeley camera inspection is all they need. If you replace the sewer, then you go through. Okay, and San Leandro? San Leandro has no ordinance. No ordinance. No ordinance, no ordinance yes, in San Leandro. Leandro. That pressure. <laughs> we'll see. Really Nothing out in Contra Costa County either. I, I think you would ask. Yes, if uh, uh, lateral was replaced, say, seven years ago, uh, my understanding is that it would be exempt. It'll, what you can get is an exemption certificate that uh, is good for 10 years from the day it was replaced. Okay, and what documentation do you need to provide for that month? Signed permit. What? A signed permit. Sign 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 yeah. yeah. Proof from the city. That from the city. Um, and and we'll description from the provider? I'm sorry? Uh, do we need to provide a work description from the uh, Not really. I, I think just a signed <coughs> permit should be uh, yeah. adequate for them. That's just so you understand, the, the permit uh, that's requested is for a sewer lateral replacement. Right. And when it's signed off, the city inspectors come out and said it's been installed to code. Right. So right. that's all these pay mud needs. What if a permit was not obtained? Then, yeah, then you don't have proof. <laughs> What's that thing? The, the thing about a permit is a good question, though. About a permit. If a permit wasn't obtained, I don't think there are any cities going back trying to catch people for doing work without permits. <coughs> they want to know what's going on from this point forward. So if your 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 client's concerned about that, don't worry about it. It's, it's not going to happen. And on the other hand, if it, if it was <laughs> yeah. done without permit and you have a camera test, in, Oakland, in Berkeley, Berkeley, and it's clear that's all you need. You get ten years. And in Oakland, you need that test. And if it's clear, that would all be all that was necessary. The difference between Berkeley and Oakland, one difference is that if the line's already been replaced or if it passes uh, the camera inspection, you get a 10-year certificate as opposed to a 20-year if uh, you replace the whole line in Berkeley. East Bay Mud areas, it's a 20-year certificate if you replace the whole lateral. It's a seven-year certificate if you do a partial replacement or if it passes the test. If, and again, if you prove that the line has been replaced in the last 10 years, then uh, you get a provisional certificate or an exemption, basically, until such time as that 10 years expires and then the house goes on the market. How much does the exemption that's another. That's one hundred and fifty dollars for the exemption, and then uh, and also if you're putting the deposit down, the forty five hundred dollar deposit to get a a delay on it, then uh, you have to pay one hundred and fifty dollars as well as the forty five hundred. But when you eventually go to get a certificate, as long as it's done within that six months, they'll apply that one hundred and fifty towards the certificate. If you wait over six months, got paid. Yeah, <laughs> that pressure test. Seems like it's more designed, unless there's a clog, for water seeping in than it is for water seeping out because it's running down by gravity and not under pressure. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm asking. You tell a client, you'll say, why the pressure test? Because this stuff just runs down. The pre either pressure, either water, either the infiltration test, yeah. the water test, or the pressure test is uh, is just what they determine to be what will tell them if a sewer is going to be. The pressure them. test, I think, would. Answer the latter. I mean, the infiltration <coughs> question. I think that's what it's designed yeah. for. It e e either one, uh, they found to be effective. But uh, we, when, when we determine which one we're going to do, it's basically what's going to be simplest. To do. No, what I'm so getting at is, is the pressure that you're getting in a pipe is from the hydrostatic pressure yeah. in the ground. You're not getting any pressure from inside the pipe because it's running by gravity. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the the, uh, pressure. the pressure's only bigger pressure is only five pounds. Yeah. The uh, water pressure is five feet. No. Uh, can you uh, bypass all this and just go ahead and have a trench put new trenches line put in without any inspections and just go for a permit? I would at least look at it with a camera to see if it needs it unless you, you know, it's already been done or you know for right. sure. I'd say you know, but yeah, you can bypass it's all. 50 or 20 years old. Sure. Yeah. Hey, you can pass. Yeah. Not your, because Likely at home. Yeah. There's roots growing in, the roots are going to sure. take the pressure out, and that's going to go out anyway. So. Well, what I've seen
suggest on that is have the cam. Somebody's going to have to run a camera anyway to lay the job out to find out where the pipe is located, how deep it is, and what surfaces it's under, whether it's concrete or, or whatever. So it makes sense to run the camera first to lay it out, and then if you have us do it, we'll apply the cost towards the job. Anyway. What's the uh, cost per foot on trenchless? We don't price it based on footage. Uh, not like an open cut, in other words, a trench sewer where you have your $300 a foot, whatever price people are charging for it. We find that the important factors in pricing a job are surfaces <coughs> through which we have to excavate. Concrete, asphalt, grass, beautiful garden, uh, flagstone, whatever, and depths to which we have to go. If it's uh, uh, A to B sewer lateral, it's three feet deep in the house and five feet deep at the curb. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If it's nine feet deep at the house because they're basement plumbing, then that makes it quite a bit more involved. And that's how we price it. Oakland Hills don't have clean out of the street. Most of them are directly to the main. If it's, it's a backyard main, main. yeah. That's so correct. that means you have to put a clean out then? then? There should be a clean out down there by the, yes. by the main, yeah. yeah. In agree. order to do the test, there has to be one. I've addressed that one with the city, and yes. Can you just run those trenchless pipes within the existing sewer lateral? Is that what you do? That's, there's two different types of trenchless replacement. What, what you're thinking of is called slip lining or cured in place piping. We don't do that. Most cities don't allow it. Mm -hmm. Berkeley does under selected circumstances, very selected circumstances, and El Cerrito does uh, on moratorium streets, if you know what that is, what that is where you can't mm -hmm. dig in the street. Then you can do a slip lining where they blow a liner down the, the pipe and then uh, heat it up overnight and it uh, adheres to the, it's like epoxy resin and it adheres to the sides of the pipe. Works fine, it diminishes the capacity of your pipe a little bit by about that much, which is not great. Um, but one of the problems is it doesn't provide a very good connection to the main. There's no substitute for digging it up. So uh, the type we do is called pipe bursting. <coughs> what we do is we take, let's say you're replacing a line from here to here, a sewer from here to here, you dig a hole here, dig a hole here, pass a cable that's about that big around through the existing pipe, and we pull a bursting head through the pipe. We exert up to 30 tons of force hydraulically and pull this bursting head through. It cracks the clay pipe or even cast iron, moves it out of the way, but it stays in the ground and acts as the, quote, firm bed, unquote, for which the code calls for the new pipe to be hmm. And then the bursting head has the new high-density polyethylene pipe attached to the back and pull it right in. The high-density or HDPE pipe is uh, effectively seamless, except at clean outs and connections at the house. It comes in 20 foot sections and they're butt fused together, they're heat fused, essentially melted. <coughs> and they'll last. The manufacturer says 50 to 100 years is what this pipe is made for. I'm not coming around to worry about it. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I've never seen a problem with it fail in 15 years. Is that a new tube so we can watch? I'm sorry? Is that a new tube so we can watch? <laughs> you know, you probably can grow that. Probably could. That would be a, a good search to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. we, we have a, a little an animated graphic on our website that I invite you to look at. Uh, we've got some updating to do on our website. Uh -huh. uh, we're working on that. Is that a pipe spot? 